Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today what we have is a Golf GTI. She's TSI engine and we have a water leak. Wouldn't be a bad water leak, but yet we have a water leak. And the water leak on a prior occasion, which I'm not gonna probably show you now, is leaking from just down in underneath the intake manifold down here. What we've derived with boroscopes, etc., trying to pinpoint and see where this thing is coming from, is lo and behold that it's coming from the actual water pump down here which is called a thermal a thermal management module um in here what i have gotten is couldn't get them aftermarket tried had part numbers i also had part numbers off dave sterl dave sterl have a good video on an audi a4 or an a6 on one of these tsi engines and on this tsi engine sorry i didn't realize the engine was running you mightn't hear me um he has changed that module but the engine in the a4 is longitudinal we are now transverse across the way okay so i couldn't get the thermal management module aftermarket it's made by ina as dave sterl showed in his video i'll put a link to his video on below you're all probably have seen going to have seen it because mostly his lads come to me as well um but when i couldn't get it then i didn't know if the part number was exactly the same as this one because it was an a4 so then i had to go hunting and I went to the dealers. When I couldn't find it, I went to the dealers. I'm gonna show you what I have. That's just my little bit of masking tape to hold my stuff together and clean and clear. That's the actual belt. That's the actual belt for driving the water pump. But there's a shaft coming from the timing chain over. Driving a gear over here. Belt then is driving the water pump and that's the belt for it. The water pump itself is him. Oh. Yeah, part number's actually there. That's the water pump itself. Pop it over. Just a generic E looking water pump. And then we have this. It's a module. I can't decipher because it's so wet in there whether it's coming from just the pump and or the module. Had seed and Dave change the whole thing. So then at that point in time I said I'm not going to take any chances because I could spend hours changing that. And I'm spending hours changing that, lo and behold this thing is still leaking, so I decided to not go and do it without replacing the whole module. Um, right, this is the thermal management module. This part was 370 or 80 quid. That's not bad. It's only around 100 or so euros. Um, that bolts onto that. And the whole lot is going to go in, hopefully down here, with potentially that belt on it. Now Dave did say that this is very hard to change. So I don't know whether we'll do or not when we're in there, I don't know. My attack process, I don't know either. We're probably going to go about taking off the intake manifold and try and see where I go from there. At this point, it's very hard to see it from either the top and or the bottom. Start making a bit of room. Hopefully this will be a good tutorial for someone on these things. These pumps are on a lot of the newer uh, Volkswagens and Audis. As I said, they're being driven by the shaft and the belt. So hopefully we'll find our, someone will get something for this thing, okay? We'll get in and start doing a little bit of observation. Okay, I'm just had to pull down the under tray and the effect of it is very, very visible down here where this cooling's coming from. Up and in around there somewhere. We have the under tray. Try on the way as well, so we're gonna get in and try and see. As I said there, start stripping and see where we end up, but it's buried up. That's the water pump. Okay guys, as an observation point from the top, I'm just looking at my pump and it's buried down here. I'm looking, I'm gonna take off this intercooler pipe that's sitting along there, there's a starting point. And I'm gonna head after the intake manifold. I have to disconnect that intercooler pipe or intake pipe here, also for the manifold to come up. But the bolts then are all sitting in, in here. Far, okay, so I'm gonna get out that intake pipe on the, in just two jubilee clips, um, one bolt in the middle, and then I'm gonna take off the intake manifold and try and see if I can get enough oil line room to see what I'm going at down here. Okay guys, I'm at the pulling off my intercooler pipe. 
sitting down here, along here. At least I can see where my water pump is. There's a shroud over the timing belt there. Up here, as I said there, the bar to bolts have taken out along the top. And then on a bracket sitting here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that with a voice clip and take the stud out of it. There's nothing there, but I've taken the stud out of it just so this thing will start to move a little bit. Actually, that might not be a stud because that looks like it could nearly be a mountain of some sort. Okay, I'm not taking out that. Take off the bracket from down there. Okay, how things change. Okay, guys, my change of plan on that was I spun the whole thing, screwed it out of the bottom of the intake manifold because I could give a little bit and we're nearly starting to come. We're still snagged over here somewhere. But we're starting to come off. I'm pulling off a water pipe, a few bits and pieces, but, and popping off that intake pipe, but we're, we're starting to come. And give a little bit more wiggling and see where we Okay, go. guys, a little bit of wiggling and woggling. It's kind of a little bit tight here around that sensor. Came out, out and then I had that little wearing loom was on as well and getting kind of slightly snagged on that loom itself here so that's off and then once i gave a little <coughs> out she came that steel pipe for water was a little bit low and kind of in my way so i bent that up ever so slightly maybe 10 mil um that's it we've an intake manifold off but at least we can see our module in here we'll get in and get this thing replaced I'm gonna pull off that pipe and a couple of these quick release water hoses at this point, okay? Okay, now we're starting to see a bit. I'm just at a popping off water hose going in on the bottom here. This one I have popped off. That's wedgie wedgied over there. The this yoke that's held in with a tight clip onto the starter came off of here and that's been pulled over. And now we're starting to get a bit of room in here. And I'm starting to see a bit more. I'm actually trying to take off this cover to see the time belt in there and just see where I'm going, but that's the next thing I'm going to do now and hopefully it all looks relatively bolt onable easily enough. Hopefully, four bolts, huh? Five bolts. Okay, get off this here and get off the time belt and see. Mmm guys, there we go. One time belt. In my little observation of the bolt in here and a bolt down here with all the little plastic shroud on over it. In my observation, what I'm thinking, and the reason that lads are not changing it is because the actual gear that's in there is very close to the block, and I don't believe you get the belt off out over it. And then also, I would say that the actual belt looks to be, dare I say, in very good state of repair. So it does. I wouldn't say that thing is would come off over it down there, but. Anyway, the belt does look very, very good. So she does, so if needs be, we can leave it in there. And I'm right, gonna get in, as you saw, from, from this one we have one, two, three, four, and five bolts. Firstly, I'm gonna stick my water pump on here. There's actually bolts in the water pump also. One, two, three, four, probably two missing out of but the bolts. I'm going to leave that shroud over the cooling fins just to protect the timing belt at this point, okay? And Dave started had a little tip then for getting this thing in. So look, we're going to, we'll undo those bolts and bolt that onto that. And okay guys, this is a pretty good pivotal point. I have the five bolts taken out of them. The whole thermal management module is moving for me there now. But this pointer I have got off of as we said there, Dave Sterl's video. Sitting in there, there is a little kind of a thing, something like that side of the yoke with a seal on that side and seal on that side, and it pivots, it rotates, but the, the terminal management module has to go that way off of it and then slide back on that way also. Uh, so right now what I'm gonna do with it, because I'll, it's, it's wiggling, but I have to use both hands to kind of bring it out from that little, piece in at the back, okay? That's what I'm doing at this point now, but it is nearly and just about out of the situation. Okay guys, I wiggled and woggled, and that is the actual piece. It swips and swaps and moves, moves around in there. Also, once I get it out, I had this little block connector on it, so I popped off that block thinner connector with a little toothpick, and yeah, right, well that's, that's it out. Here, that's the new one, this is the old one. I'll give you the looking 
lookings of what's happening at the bottom. It was all drowned and wet down around here. So I wasn't gonna choose pump over module. I needed a whole lot. And that's what we've done. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna start the reassembly. I bolted on the pump there. The reason these two bolts are left out of the actual pump originally was because the bolts that go through the cover for the time that are on it, okay? Okay, guys, I've been looking at it. I've been thinking about it and the belt won't come out anyway easy so i'm probably just going to as dave Stirl did leave it in there and i'm was going to try and open that nut and move that gear out the way but right now at this point i'm not going to because i don't want to have any thoughts of any putting any pressure on a shaft to do with a uh, time and chain so at this point in time sorry i'm moving a little mirror fell on me um at this point in time, i'm going to leave it in there it's on inspection it just looks perfect I'm fine with you. I'm gonna leave it there. Speed knees. What I would say is clean off the actual surface area in there as good as you can. Just to that block connector is only me as a fidget and something in there to hold it. Um, clean it off as good as you can because you don't want to have to go in here again. That's it. We're going back together. Okay, guys. I sat it in with the little shroud in at the back in place. I still have my bolts loose, but I don't think I don't think I really really needed to. I could have um, sent my belt on, which it's gone on very, very easy there. I could have just sent it on with the module probably bolted into place. Uh, that's me just starting it, starting off one of the bolts. You know, that all happened relatively handy. So it did. So yeah, look, I didn't change the belt on this occasion. Maybe the next time we'll uh, do something like that. Belt can't go in, in the way with that lip belt can't come out the way with that lip that's kind of it i might put the belt push the belt back out again it'll go out itself but i'm going to push it out maybe just for for ease or clarity at this point in time now i can take off this little thing this is actually what helped me to get the belt on nice and easy okay time for me to start squeezing up stuff lads. okay guys intake pipe put on all the water hose put on the cover or the shroud over the time belt oil pressure switch put on make sure we have the block connector on the bottom of the thermal management thing that is on for your own selves. Um, any of my block connectors and stuff that were hanging around are now kind of pulled out of my way and I'm ready to go back in with my intake manifold. I've just given a rub down of the actual seals around the intake manifold and on the head. That's it, I'm gonna start trying to wiggle and wiggle this uh, intake manifold back in, okay? Okay guys, this is what I done to take it out. I didn't show it. But I didn't feel like going down and tackling the uh, bolt that was way down fair. That was simply that. I can take manifold is down back in there now and a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a woggle, but it does go in there and it's not actually so bad, truth is told. Um, now all I'm doing is squeeze up that little thing. It is an actual, as you can see there, it is a rubber, rubber mounting or support. That's it, start getting in a couple of bolts. She's kind of sitting somewhat together there now. Okay guys, that is that. I have the airbox in, all my bits and pieces, pipes, clips, bolts, uh, back together, block connectors, connected up. Uh, yeah, kind of, well, far up here anyway, it's done. I'm now going to start sucking air out of the cooling system and refilling. It would coolant and I'm to put on an under tray, maybe in an engine cover up top. Um, but that's kind of it, like I'm, I'm kind of done. I suck out this bit of stuff and I get it out on the road and I'll see how we go. We're done, yeah. It wasn't actually, dare I say it wasn't, I wouldn't say it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as hard as what I, I kind of originally thought. I don't know, time scale. I've been coming and going, so I, I don't know. I'd say it probably, could you be looking at around five hours on it? I don't know. Somewhere around there, maybe. Four. Not, but it's not too bad. It's not, not an all day sitting because I've been off doing other stuff. I didn't pull it in first thing in the morning. I was a little bit of the day went and then I was off doing other bit. So maybe around there. But for now, yeah, it's back in. It's done. It's nice to have the complete unit in there so you don't have any doubts that it's going to be leaking again. Um, Volkswagen being Volkswagen, comparing to the Mazdas, 
lot of plasticky yolks on them. So everything that you touch is flimicky and flimsy and you know, you, you run the risk that you're gonna break stuff. But it came out fairly okay, went in fairly okay. And yeah, I'm just thinking that it's, it's not so bad. Intercooler pipe that was out here is back in with the jubel clip tight, tight on the back, etc. Time to start sucking, sucking air out and filling with coolant and, um, and give her a start, give her a run, do a little bit of an observation underneath while the under tray is off and stuff, okay? Okay guys, that's it for this one. Our golf is done and dusted. Um, put back together, have done a couple of miles in it. We have our running there now, no check engine lights or anything on. So yeah, look, it's, it's as I said, they're not so bad. Um, anyone want to tackle it, go for it. The belt, I don't know whether someone goes long and goes, tackle's changing it. I didn't want to put any pressure on that nut in case of time and chain or any of that crack, maybe the special tools for it. Can't get at it when you fly without, I believe. But for this one, the belt was perfect. So, hey guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if my hints and tips are any good to you. And hopefully this will be some use to someone. Guys, thank you. Talk soon. See you next cartoon. Peter Kennedy signing out.